let's look at one last thing in section 6.4. This was a, a longer of a section compared to others. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on here, bringing, bringing everything together. So continuing on with the spectral, uh, the spectral uh, theorem for symmetric and, ortho, uh, symmetric and Hermitian matrices, I want to talk about the spectral decomposition of a symmetric or Hermitian matrix. So we'll do this in the special case of a symmetric matrix, but be aware that this is true for, for her Hermitian matrix as well. Since the matrix is symmetric, it has an orthogonal diagonalization of P, D, P, T, um, for which then the columns of P are the eigenvectors of A. The diagonal entries of D are exactly the eigenvalues of a, and then the rows of PT, these are going to be the left eigenvectors of A, which are none other than just the transposes of the columns of, of P here. Uh, so really, the, the for a symmetric matrix, the left eigenvectors are just the same as the, the traditional eigenvectors, the so-called right eigenvectors there. Now, as this is a diagonal matrix in the middle right here, if we multiply this matrix with the first matrix right here, uh, timesing a diagonal matrix on the right here has the effect that you'll scale each column by the diagonal entry. And so when you do that, you end up getting this right here. You get lambda 1 times u1, you'll get lambda 2 times u2, lambda 3 times u3, all the way up to lambda n un. You're just going to scale each column by lambda, like so. And so then if you take this matrix right here, you see all the columns, and you see this matrix here, you see all the rows. When you multiply that together by the usual rules of matrix multiplication, you get something that kind of looks like a dot product. You're going to get lambda 1, u1 times u1 transpose. You'll get a lambda 2, u2, u2 transpose, all the way down to lambda n, un, un transpose, which they're not dot products because the transpose is on the outside, not the inside. Oh, that's right. We have an outer product, not the inner product. You're going to get u1 tensor u1, you're going to get uh, lambda 2 u1 tensor u, or u2 tensor u2, all the way up to lambda n, then ten, uh, un tensor un, like so. Uh, and so this right here is going to, what we call the, the, this sum, A equals the sum of all of these matrices. This is what we mean by the spectral decomposition of a matrix A. Now these uh, these outer products u1 tensor u1 u2 tensor u2 two, u3 tensor u3 we're going to abbreviate those as just bi so bi is uh, this ui tensor ui which is the outer product ui times ui transpose now these matrices bi they're going to be n by n matrices um, they're going to necessarily be symmetric and they're each going to be rank one that is uh, if you look at if you look at the column space, they're just, uh, if you look at the columns of this matrix B, you're just going to get the same, the same column showing up over and over again, although you might get different scalar multiples of them. Uh, some other things to mention about these BIs here. And so, I mean, the, the, the BI here, the span, the column space of BI is none other, none other than just the span of just the UI you started off with that eigenvector. Uh, if you take two different BIs, BI times BJ, this is always going to equal zero. So you could say that these matrices are orthogonal with each other, right? The product of them is zero. And then if you square any one of them, bi times bi, you just get by bi. So these matrices are in fact going to be eigenpotent matrices. So we've constructed a set of orthogonal eigenpotent matrices. And this is this is a discussion for symmetric matrices. Of course, if you're considering complex vectors and you have a Hermitian matrix, uh, then the tensor product the outer product here, u tensor v will be u v star. So like usual, change the transposes into conjugate transposes when you're working with uh, complex vectors there. And the spectral decomposition is similar. So let's look at an example of this spectral decomposition for us matrix. We'll just take this two by two symmetric matrix, <clears throat> seven, two, two, four here. And so it can be shown, I'm not gonna give you the details of all of these, uh, but it can be shown that here is an orthogonal diagonalization of the matrix A. Its eigenvalues turn out to be 8 and 3. And so we're actually going to record that here. We get eigenvalue 1 is 8. We're going to get eigenvalue 2 is 3. And then if you look at this right here, here's our U1. This is an eigenvector for A associated to the eigenvalue 8. So we get the U1 is this matrix 
2 over the square root of 5, 1 over the square root of 5. And then for lambda 2, our second eigenvector, u2, it'll be the second column right here. Just copy it down as you see it. And so you get negative 1 over the square root of 5 and 2 over the square root of 5, like so. And so you see those exactly right here. So let's compute the outer products of these eigenvectors here. These are going to be unit eigenvectors, of course. Um, so if you take u1 tensor u1, you'll take the dot product of the vector with itself. So we had 2 over the square root of 5 and 1 over the square root of 5. So if you look at the possible products, you get 2 over root 5 times 2 over root 5. That gives you 4 fifths. Uh, then 2 over root 5 and 1 over root 5 gives you 2 fifths. 1 over root 5 and 2 over root 5 gives you 2 fifths again. Uh, this will be a symmetric matrix. Whenever you take an outer product of a vector with itself, you always end up with a symmetric matrix or, uh, or Hermitian matrix. Depends whether you're real or complex. And if you take 1 over root 5 with 1 over root 5, you get 1 fifth. Um, so you get the following matrix right here. This is this right here is our B1. And then if you do the second one, U2 tensor U2, you'll get negative 1 over root 5 with itself, which is 1 fifth. You'll get negative 1 over root 5 with 2 over root 5, which is 2 fifths. You'll get 2 over the square root of 5 with negative 1 over the square root of 5, which is, again, negative 2 fifths. Again, it's symmetric. And then if you do 2 over root 5 with 2 over root 5, you get 4 fifths, like here. And so this gives us the matrix B2. And so I do want you to sort of verify that these matrices are, in fact, orthogonal and idempotent. If we take B1 squared, this means we take 4 fifths. Uh, two fifths, two fifths because it's symmetric, and one fifth. If you take it with itself, uh, you'll end up with 16. Uh, what, what are we doing there? So we're going to take four fifths times four fifths, just to just to help me out here. Maybe I don't want to do too much in my head, uh, but let's just take this right here. So we want to take the first row times the first column like that, right? Well, in that situation, you're going to end up with 16 over 25 plus you're going to get 4 over 25. We'll come back to that one in a second. Take the first row times the second column. You're going to get 8 over 25, and you end up with also uh, 2 over 25. Admittedly, in hindsight, I could have factored all these one-fifths out, but oh well, we'll just stick with it. Uh, you're going to get 8 over 25 plus 2 over 25 again. And then lastly, you're going to end up with 4 over 25 and then 1 over 25. So when you add these things together, notice everything is over, 120, or over 25. I'm going to factor that out now. So we end up with 20, 10, 10, and 5. Everything is divisible by 5. If we factor out the 5 and cancel out, we're going to get 1 fifth times 4, 2, 2, and 1. And of course, if you redistribute that 1 fifth through, you know she end up with a B1 right here. Um, I'll leave it up to you to check that B2, likewise, um, is idempotent. Uh, it's not too hard to do. It's a very similar calculation to that. But you can check that B2 is also an idempotent matrix. B2 squared is equal to B2. If we take B1 times B2 in terms of a, ma a matrix product, again, I'm going to use a little bit of foresight and factor out the 1 fifth here. So we get 1 fifth, 4, 2, 2, and 1. And then we can factor out another 1 fifth from B2. And so we get 1, negative 2, negative 2, and 4. So the 1 fifths come together to give you 1 over 25. And then if you look at these products here, you're going to get 4, 2 times 1, negative 2. Uh, so you're going to get 4 minus 4. Uh, first row, second column, you get negative 8 plus 8. Uh, second column, first, sorry, second row, first column, you get 2 minus 2. And then lastly, you're going to get negative 4 plus 4. And so you can see that those the coefficient of 1 over 25 in the front is irrelevant because you end up with the zero, the 0 matrix. So that in fact, we do have orthogonal idempotent matrices going on right here. So that gives us, so we do have these orthogonal idempotent matrices, but then when we start combining these together, if we take eight, oh, you can just see it right here. I don't need to write it out. If you take eight, so this, this first part right here, 
This is just eight times B1. Eight was the first eigenvalue. You get three times B2. We claim that this is equal to the matrix A. Well, if you take B1, that's right here. Take B2, that's right there. And try to simplify this thing if you dare. Uh, it, I mean, it's not too horrible, right? You can factor out the one fifth from everything. You end up with 32 plus three. Uh, then we end up with 16 minus six. Uh, then we end up with what's coming next. We're gonna get 16 minus six again. It's symmetric, that's not surprising. And then we get eight plus 12 like so, uh, combining those those terms in the in the different positions here, we get 35, 10, 10, oh boy, 10, and then 20. Again, those are all divisible by five. If we divide everything by five, we end up with seven, two, two, and four, like so, which is the original matrix A. So we are able to decompose as a sum of the, the the matrix is the sum of these it's, it's a scalar it's a it's a linear combination of these orthogonal eigenpotent matrices and this is what we mean by this spectral decomposition um, remember decomposition typically means that we're going to write uh, a matrix or a vector as a sum or linear combination of things as opposed to a factorization which means we're going to write the matrix into smaller factors using multiplication in that sense and so that brings us to the end of section 6.4. It was a longer section than others. Like I said, there's a lot going on here, but there's a lot of really cool stuff uh, for us to see. But that does bring us to the close of section 6.4. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please uh, post them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about these linear algebra topics. Uh, click the like button. Feel free to subscribe uh, so you can see more updates and more cool uh, linear algebra videos or other math videos in the future. Um, check them out on my channel if, you, if you're interested, and I'll talk to you next time uh, where we can learn some more about linear algebra. Bye, everyone.